So I think uh, I did this, I did a similar program. Um, what was it? A couple, like maybe a month ago on, on the law of manifestation. And tonight we're going to, we're going to talk about the law, not the law of abundance. We're going to talk about abundance uh, in a couple of different places. Um, and um, I'm sure it's probably stuff you, you guys have heard before and, and, you know, possibly looked at before, but it might be a good, good reminder. And then you might be able to also pick up some new, uh, some new tips moving yourself uh, into, into abundance. Um, well, you know, we're coming through this whole pandemic thing and um, being home and, you know, abundance had a tendency to shy away from us a little bit. So we're all trying to get back into it. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, our meditation is going to be about abundance tonight. So we will incorporate uh, abundance in our meditation somehow. I don't know how it works, but when it works, I'll just go and we'll do it. Um, so um, let, we'll, um, we'll proceed. Um, I want to start off by saying that when you, when you consider abundance, um, in, in our world and in our universe, we are in a place of extreme abundance. Like everything is present. There's nothing really that's lacking. Um, and interestingly, abundance has a kind of a duality to it because there's an abundance of what you could call good and there's an abundance of what you could call bad or positive or negative or abundance of moving really well in your life or an abundance of things that move you not so well in your life. And it's really about comes down to um, your attachment around it or your detachment around it. Most of us who are suffering from lack of abundance in our lives have actually uh, moved away from the concept that everything is available to you and your, your mind or your demeanor or your, your mental uh, set around it is more, more like it's you're being deprived of abundance for some reason. So abundance is most certainly uh, a proactive step within yourself. And abundance is, is a most definitely a building block. When you are building and considering to create abundance in your life, a lot of folks will look at, well, it's all available, I want it right now. So we're gonna talk a little bit about time and the abundance of time and how to, how to find more time. Um, but I wanna tell you a little story. Let's say you're wanting to put rocks in your gardens and you wanna, okay, well, I wanna get rocks and I wanna put rocks in my garden. The world, our earth is full of rocks. There's an abundance of rocks. You can never deplete all the rocks that are available to you. So let's say, for instance, you decide, well, I really like beach rocks. And you start saying, okay, I'm going to get the beach rocks. And you go to the beach and you start collecting rocks. Well, rocks are heavy and it takes time for you to accumulate them and get them home. You have to put them in your car and take them home and put them in your garden. But you've, you've made a start and you're never going to deplete the beach of rocks. And, but it's going to take you some time to keep going there and pick them up till you're abundantly clear you have enough of them or you still want to go and get more. So the moral of the story is, is what you desire in your life or what is lacking in your life or what you're looking to become abundantly um, holding. Uh, it, it's a proactive step that needs to be taken. It, it, it's your, it's really your decision, your thought, your recognition, and taking action. So when you take action towards receiving abundance, um, that's, that's a real big key. If you, if you get into a place where it's not coming quick enough, um, that's always a problem for a lot of people. So consider that when you're looking to create abundance in your life and you've taken action and you're, you're going and collecting those rocks, and it may take you a little time, 
So discouragement is an emotion kind of that comes into play where you start getting discouraged while it's not happening or I'm not making enough money or there's no love in my life and so forth and so on. So we take proactive steps to do that. If you want to create abundance in your life monetarily, there's enough money in the world. You could, you could most definitely be a millionaire. You could most definitely make as much money as you want. But again, it's what steps are you taking to create that abundance for yourself? A lot of people get to a certain point in their age and no one really told them, well, you need to get that little envelope going and start saving 10% or 5% every week and just keep saving it and saving it. It's kind of like collecting the rocks, right? So now you're, you're collecting money and it starts to grow. Um, we always hear, we've always heard this thing, um, some of us have growing up with different uh, churches and thing that you need to tie 10% to the church. Well, the church has, is full of abundance and they have a lot of followers and a lot of people give the church money. So they have their little envelope and they've had their little envelope for, you know, decades and decades and centuries and look where that's got them. So consider within yourself monetarily, this is, this is definitely a movement that you make towards yourself. You're in a, in a place, we're all in a different place monetarily, but we can start making that, making that action and making those decisions to move that towards us. So in a monetary way as well, we're, you know, most of us are working to pay bills, right? We're working to pay bills. So it's kind of funny when you look at the poor, the middle class and, and, the, and the wealthy, uh, the wealthy are earning money to pay bills. They're using that envelope that they've so gracefully touched and, and keep filling and they're using their money to make money. So, you know, interest rates are low and things like that, they're coming up. But the thing is, it's, it's really a compound thing. If you're in, also, if you're in a job where you're working to pay bills and you want a more abundance of more money, this is a proactive step. Some people will go out and get a second job. Some people will start asking the right questions to other people who are doing it very well and start to get those answers and those, those ideas within themselves. How do I do that? Um, you know, it's very hard it's very hard to get behind once you get behind the eight ball. I mean, the eight ball is like the worst ball in the world. That's, you know, in the pool, that's a, if you're playing eight ball, it's the last ball that goes in. But when I play straight pool, that's the first ball that goes in. Cause I do not like the eight ball. I've been behind the eight ball, but quite a while ago, I started making decisions that were, you know, proactive. What, what do I need to do to create, monetary value and have abundance in my life. Um, so consider if, if you want abundance in your life monetarily, it's, it's all out there. It's all out there for you. Um, you're definitely gonna have roadblocks along the way. You're definitely gonna make decisions that um, aren't, aren't so good. Um, but you can't, this, this motion of discouragement is a real, real killer. So know that discouragement is out there. Um, know that if you're conscious of it and you see it within yourself and you're starting to get discouraged, you have to try to eliminate that the best way you can and still try to find that energy and that vibration within yourself that makes you proactive and moving towards it. Um, I, when I first started trying to, I was, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to get money? Blah, 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 blah. So I had my first stock experience and I was banking with Washington Mutual and the stock was $15 a share. And I was watching banks I'm like, okay, I got this. Well, make a long story short, I invested in Washington Mutual the next week, Chase, took over Washington Mutual and wiped out all their stock and didn't reciprocate their stock. So it was like, 
that week I invested and the following week I lost it. I was really, really discouraged. And it took me years and years and years to even get up enough courage, enough courage to say, okay, well, no, that was, these things happen. We're, you know, it was a, maybe not such a conservative move, but it was a move that I thought would work and it didn't. But it, like I said, it took me time to regroup myself and, and, and get it together. So your mindset's real, real important. If you are in a mindset where you're working to pay bills and that's what you're focused on, that's where you're going to stay. There's just no question about it. If you are in a state that you don't have enough, this is also going to affect you. So your mindset is a real, 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 real big player in the law of abundance or in, in monetary abundance. If you're feeling without, like I can't get this or I can't do this, um, those are words that speak to your subconscious and eventually you start believing it. Eventually you start a habitual process day in and day out that that's where you are and that's where you live and there's no way out. There's always a way out. And it's, it's really your responsibility to start making decisions. How am I going to do this? Where do I start? If you don't have the answers and you're looking for the answers, there's a lot of people um, that can help you. Um, but always take information with discernment and think about it really, really for yourself and how it's gonna work for you and start implementing little by little, like picking up those rocks. You'll find that if you do that in a year, things will change. Um, in two years, five years, uh, things will start to change and, and you know, uh, move, move more in that way of monetary um, um, fulfillment, so to speak, in, in abundance. A lot of people get set in, um, in jobs where uh, they're really undervalued. Most people will say, well, I, you know, some people really love their work and love what they do, um, but a lot of people will go to work and feel undervalued. Um, again, this is a mindset thing. You're starting to incorporate this idea within yourself uh, that you're not valued and you're outsourcing your value or you're outsourcing that energy to some, to somebody else in your thoughts. So be careful of your thoughts. Any, every single person is, has a value. Every single, every single, every single person's value is, is, is an individual thing. And it's not a stagnant thing. Like your value is beyond compare and it's an evolutionary process. And you, know, you take little steps like going to pick up that pick up, you know, maybe the first day you go, you pick up four or five rocks. The next day you bring a five gallon bucket and you take 20 rocks. See how that goes. The next time you go, you may say, well, I'm going to have a landscaper pick them up for me somewhere else. And the next thing you know, your garden's done in one day. So it's kind of when, when you start to see your value and you start to realize that you can implement somebody else in the process, you can get things done a lot quicker. So look, look for value in other people and other people's ideas and thoughts and start to incorporate in them in your life. Um, if you can get to a place where you can start using other people's money, it's even greater. So take uh, uh, the Jet Jet Blue card, right? You you sign up for the card, you get your card. You know, it's a it's a fee. You pay the fee. You have so you go to the store every day, right? You're buying things every single day using your debit card, right? And you're spending your money. Well, you're going to spend your money on the, on the JetBlue card, but you get 30 days to use other people's money. So what are you doing with that money in between is really, really important. Also, you're gaining abundance of credits. Oh, maybe you want to take a trip. 
the next time you take a trip, you may have a free round trip or you, you and your spouse or whatever may have a free, free round trip. And you just, you just utilize the, the law of abundance because you started using other people's money. So pay off the, pay off the card at the end of the month, just save your money and start accruing, accruing that, um, it, it's so, so feasible, but it, it really takes you to, to make, make the decision that you want to do it. Um, investments are really, really good. The best investment that you can ever make monetarily is yourself. So many people will invest in, in uh, so many other things other than themselves. So consider investing in yourself, not only monetarily, but with self-love, right? Who is the most important person in the world? Well, it could be your children, it could be your husband, but no, they're important. But the most important person in, in the world is you and you have value. So, this is a, uh, we're going to talk about this in the meditation. We're going to bring you through a meditation where you see your value. You see what you're worth. Well, I, I can't do that. I can't do this. No, that's the, all those are that inner dialogue that is discouragement. So, that, so we're going to incorporate value into the meditation. Um, we can look at, at love as uh, something that's very abundant. In the world today, there's a very, very large abundance of love. But remember I told you that there's duality here. There's also a lot of lack of love, right? So if you've been in a situation where you know, your partner or things of that nature um, have um, left or there's been problems, and you're feeling a lack of love, consider that you're drawing to yourself that duality and abundance of lack of love, a lack of worthiness because of, because of something else or somebody else. So when you start to realize that the world is full of love and you're, you are the most important thing, you're the most important person, and you start to value that, you all you change the dynamics around energy and vibration. You change that, you start drawing that to yourself. So, so many people want a relationship or they want this to be better, or they want this to be better. It's just like going to the beach and collecting rocks. Where, where are you looking for it? So, so many people will look in places and they don't find it but the world is full of a million billion places and it's there, but you have to be proactive within yourself to go out, to go out and know that you're worthy of it. Know that you're not lacking in it. I've met some of the greatest people that just suffering and wanted to, wanted to find love. And they just sit there for years and months and weeks or whatever and stew and, this place, why are you sitting there? You don't have to sit there anymore. Like, no, your self-worth is important. Your self-love is important. You'll find that when you start doing that, things will change around you. Your energy will change. Your face structure will change. You'll feel more apt to do things for you that make you look better, to make you feel better. And that will draw this, this energy and vibration to you. So you're, you're in control or you're not in control. Um, getting in control is really, really important. And abundance will, the abundance of love will absolutely be there waiting for you. And like money, well, I just told you the story about Washington Mutual. Like money, it's the same thing. You're out in, you're out in the world. There's a lot of different uh, components to it. 
It's not that you're, you know, it, it, it may not happen the first or second time. It may not happen um, right away, but you're worthy of it. And you must consider to just keep moving forward to first to know that it's there, know that it exists. You're not lacking anything yourself. You're just searching for that that moves you in in that place in that environment. And time is a time is a structure here, right? So, well, I don't have enough time, or there's not enough time in the day. I will tell you that there's an abundance of time. No question about it. We all have 24 hours in the day. I mean, nobody has more, more hours than anybody else. But again, it's well, how, well, how are we using those? Well, I, I got to get up and run to work. I don't have time to do that, or I don't have time to do this. I mean, we sleep, some of us sleep eight, you know, seven, eight, nine hours a day. And this whole idea and this paradigm that you have to sleep, you know, and get eight hours a day to be, to be rested. Um, it, I don't really follow that train of thought too well. If you are moving in a joyful place, if you're moving in a self, a place of self-love, um, your body doesn't need as much recuperation. If you are taking care of yourself, if you're exercising, if you're eating well, and you're showing yourself that self-love, uh, you're going to create more time in your day. You're going to wake up in the morning and, well, I got to leave at seven o'clock. Well, you know, you usually get up at six. It's routine. Get up at 530. You know, get up and sit up in bed for a minute and realize what a miraculous thing just happened. It was a miracle. Absolute miracle. You woke up this morning. You get a whole nother day to do it. Um, but when you're in that place where you're in that habit, where it's, oh, I got to wake up and go to work. So you've already, you've already kind of wasted that time in between. You haven't really stopped to look that even, even a second or one minute that's used to your advantage, you're saving time. When you're in a place where you're constantly frenetic running, doing children, this and that, and the other thing, it kind of strips you of your time. So it's important to make time for yourself and create a space for yourself. Even if it's just five minutes a day. Um, well, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. Okay, you're tired, but you know, give yourself another 15 minutes and start working on yourself and start creating time for yourself time will start to work in your advantage. Remember, it's mindset, right? So if you're moving through time and time is, is, is hard to move through and that's where you're, you're at with it, you're, you're, the days are gonna rush by and you're just doing the same thing day in and day out and you really haven't given yourself any time. That mindset, I don't have any time. No, you have time. No, I don't have any, I don't have enough money. No, you have all the tools that you need to make it work. You have all the tools to make abundantly the most beautiful life you could ever live. So it's kind of interesting if you took a piece of paper and you drew a line down the middle of the paper. And you said, these are the do's, these are the don'ts. And you started off kind of emotion, say emotions. What are the emotions that I need to create abundance in my life? And what are the emotions that are depleting that in my life? And reflect on that. Like, look at it. Put it in a drawer, put it in a folder somewhere look at it again. The more time you spend with yourself reflecting on what it is you want 
and what kind of abundance you want in your life. You can do you can do the same thing with money, right? Well, I, I my bills are this, and I only have this extra money. Okay, well, what what do you want? How can you do it? Um, I listen. I love Starbucks coffee. I really, really do. I love it. Um, I don't buy it anymore. I can make a cup of coffee at my house for like two cents. For two cents. I see people go to Starbucks twice a day spending like $15 a day on coffee. Like, no, that $15, you could spend four or even let's say 10 cents at your house, 20 cents, two cups of coffee. You could take that $14.80 and put it in an envelope. And then at the end of the week, at the end of the month, you got $200. I mean, so taking that piece of paper, it could be a mental piece of paper. You could do it in your mind if you're really conscious. But it's, it's consistency, that knowing what you're doing, where you're doing it, and how you're doing it. Um, <clears throat> I was, I'm a carpenter and I was, you know, deli sandwiches, go to the deli, get lunch, blah, blah, blah. I was spending like easily $220 a week at lunch. I started like, okay, no, it's Sunday. I'll, I'll boil some eggs. I'll make, get some bread. I'll make, I'll make my own lunch. I saved more money in a year not going outsourcing my lunch. Like, no, I, I, had, I had over like $1,200 easily just in bringing my own lunch. And I don't like to say it, but I was a heavy smoker for a long time. And I would spend like $12 a day on a pack of cigarettes. Once I stopped smoking cigarettes, like, where did all this money come from in my wallet? At the end of the week, I was, I, I was spending $70 a week on cigarettes <clears throat> or more. That's $280 a month. So these are the proactive steps. If you want abundance in your life, you have to make <clears throat> decisions like that and start building on really, really good action. Um, I'll tell you another funny story. I, I love Whole Foods. I really do. It's, it's damn expensive. It's really expensive. <laughs> so my wife, Kathleen, she's funny. She, she deals with me. Um, let's go to Whole Foods. I love, you know, the food is organic, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, I'm leaving Whole Foods with like a $240, $200 food bill. So my son's a chef and he takes me to meat farms here in Northport where I live. And I was like, wow, this is really nice here. I've never been in here. I walked out of there and spent like half of what I would have spent at Whole Foods. So You, you can certainly do it. Love, love is an interesting thing because I had this person that I mentored and I, their name isn't important. And um, this, it was a woman and she had um, been engaged and she, her fiance broke up with her and the engagement was off. Completely devastated, totally devastated. Um, and years had gone by, she hadn't met anybody. And I did a reading for her, we talked and I brought up two people in the reading psychically that, that she had met. And no, she had, she had met people that were really, really good people really, really nice people, but she was so hurt and so blind to the fact 
that she might get hurt again, or this person wasn't good enough for this. So, so much of opportunity and so much of abundance passes by. It just walks right by us because of emotional structures. Well, I'm not good enough, or my body's not good enough, or my hair's not pretty enough. No. You know, there's a funny saying, there's an ass for every seat. Um, no, there's, it's there. But if you're in that place of depletion, if you're in that place of stress or depression around any of these topics, money, love, or time, it's, to, it's time to give yourself self-love and start taking actions, little actions, baby actions. When you align yourself in a certain way, when you align yourself in a certain way, big things happen. The universe will bring to you abundance. But the universe is not going to bring you abundance if, if, you're, in a, if you're in a state of dismay. Because you're not going to see it. You're going to walk right by it. I had the opportunity twice. Um, my, my dad used to call it grabbing the brass rail. Like It comes around. It walks right by you. And if you're not present and you're not open to it, um, it just walks right by you opportunities um always be open for opportunities in abundance i'll <clears throat> tell them too many stories tonight but i'll tell you another story <clears throat> i had my own business um, for 35 years i went through ups and downs and i had was making crazy good money and then i was on an adjustable income very difficult place to live um and it, we, we, I went through hard times and I started meditating. I started doing spirit work more. I started working on myself, giving myself more time and opening up to the possibility that there's something better for me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I had absolute faith that it was coming. I didn't know when it was coming or how it was coming. I don't know. I didn't know who it was going to be. I didn't know anything. But I had that inner faith and that inner drive that I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to do the best I can do for myself and create this place. I know it's going to happen. And I was very fortunate one day to walk on a job site. Um, and the brass rail came along and I grabbed it. My whole life changed. Money changed. My time changed. But you see, I had, I had moved myself in a place that I was loving myself. I was in acceptance that the universe and, and the abundance was there for me, but I had to align to it. It's like I had to show myself that this, this is, this is going to happen. This is definitely going to happen. I had times where I was, you know, down and out and Oh, it's not going to happen. And just, oh, just terrible. My wife could tell you she, she went through it. Um, when you align yourself, when you take actions, appropriate actions, it's going to happen. There's no question about it. You know, that story, uh, that Jim Carrey story, he wrote himself a check for a million dollars. He didn't have a dime and uh, he cashed that check. And everybody looks at that story and says, well, oh, that's a Cinderella story. I got to tell you something. It, it was a Cinderella story, but that guy worked hard, did not give up. He pounded every door, every pavement, anything he could do to get what he wanted. He had to drive. He, had, he knew it was there. He knew he could do it. Um, that's what grabbing the brass rails kind of like grabbing a hold of yourself and saying my situation or my condition right now is not what I want how do I change it if you got to put it on a piece of paper write it down if you can hold on to it mentally um, 
if you crash and burn, you got to get back up and, and start all over again. So I've seen so many people talk about this law of abundance thing and I've seen people just sitting around and waiting for it to happen. And I've seen them sit for years and years and years. Some of them I sat watched and now they're, they're not even here anymore. It never happened. So I guess kind of just let's kind of surmise it up and just say it can really happen if you want it to happen, but you got to want it. You got to put in the time, you got to work at it. Um, I think, I don't think the, the best thing that you can do is start seeing yourself as abundant. I go to the gym uh, every day. I see I see a guy in there um, with a prosthetic. Um, this this guy's just mind blowing. He's full of abundance. He doesn't he doesn't have a leg, but he's in there and he's just ripped and just he's so into it. So if you want to build a good body. You can do it. The abundance is there. You want to lose weight? You can do it. Um, you want whatever you want? You can do it. But the irony of it is, people can teach you and show you, um, but you're not going to get that good body unless you go to the gym and do it. You could be the richest man in the world and have all the money and have all the fame and everything. If you want a good body, you can't. You you, you got to do it. So. Money, money, love, and time is in your, in your favor, but you have to be favorably for yourself and prioritize you. And that's all it is. Very simple. Right? Pretty hard. <laughs> One thing is absolutely for sure, and I'm... I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a religious person. I'm a very spiritual person because I know too many people from all over the world and so many different um, thoughts uh, around this. Um, there's a force of nature. There's a force, a creative force that is absolutely provided every single thing you could absolutely imagine. I mean, Look at a lion. I mean, look at look at whatever whatever it is that moves you. Find that thing that moves you. The lion's kind of my thing these days. Um, this this my my new power animal is a lion. Um, find the thing that moves you. The Creator has given it all to you. You're not lacking anything, whether it's money, food, love, time. Give it to yourself. No one's going to give it to you. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> I guess I'm pontif <clears throat> pontificating and, and going on too much. Um, e easy concepts to understand. Stop going to Starbucks, spending fifteen dollars a day on coffee. <laughs> Make your coffee home. Hell, buy a damn thermos and bring it with you. It might not be a the caramel brulee. And you know what? I did this thing uh, years ago, um, Body for Life, Bill Williams. And he was, he was a great, great mentor. Um, if that's your thing, you know, give yourself one day a week. Give yourself, like work hard six days a week and say, okay, Sunday is my piss away day. I'm going to go to Starbucks and we get my creme brulee. I'm going to go get, I'm going to have my, ice cream or whatever it is you want to do like reward yourself there's nothing wrong with rewarding yourself but to stew every day and just be wasteful like well you know no it's there don't be wasteful don't waste don't waste your energy your time on things that are not propelling you and moving you in in the way you want to go and everything will come together i promise 
There's no question about it. And if you're looking for that love in your life, man, it's, it's, it's totally there. It's just, um, it's just accepting it and seeing what it is. Um, better, better, the, be, the more you work on bettering yourself every day, the law of abundance is going to find you. And if you step into it, it's, it's, it's so enlightening. It's like, oh my God, what the hell just happened for me? No, you, you, you did it. You did it. No one did it for you. Um, it's, it's really this life, your life, everyone's life, such a great journey. Um, you got to piss away day. Find some time. Like, no, I'm going to go for a walk today. Or I'm going to go to the beach and walk the beach. Or I'm going to do something for me. I'm going to go get my nails done. Or I'm going to get my hair done. Or do, if you are feeling good about yourself, you're going to make good decisions. If you're feeling bad about yourself, you're going to make bad decisions. So don't forget to pamper yourself, take care of yourself, and create, a, create that abundance in yourself. Don't forget to smile. Have a great night, everybody. If you like the YouTube, check it out, share it. Um, subscribe to my channel. Check out my website. Much love and peace. Namaste.